Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrids. After three years worth of testing Zywe LFR, two years worth of multi-location data, we now have a much better understanding of just where does this particular fungicide fit and provide us the highest opportunity for profitability, as well as those situations where perhaps it doesn't provide us the best plant protection. So as we look back at this past season's fungicide rate and timing study, you can see we applied a fungicide in a variety of ways, whether it be Zyway by itself with the planter, Zyway followed by Veltima post-tassel, or even just Veltima by itself post-tassel. Regardless of the treatment, you can see the overall benefits and that return on investment were pretty positive. But there's much more to be learned if we dig into the individual locations that, that compiled this data. You can see we conducted this study at five different sites. And we've seen varying levels of response. From the Indiana Ohio data, you can see, regardless of the treatment, it looked pretty good, especially those Iowa treatments. However, the Kentucky Iowa data doesn't look, look nearly as positive. So let's dig into the details of where Zyway is a fit and where perhaps uh, there's other plant protections that may serve better. Zyway is very good at these three diseases. But what it's really key on and its key strengths are really negating Fusarium crown rot and northern corn leaf blight. I'm sure many of you heard of Fusarium crown rot, but it's a disease that affects the plant very, very early. So it's after that seed treatment is worn off. So say about V2 up to about V6, V7. When we stay persistently wet or when we get a single large rain event can be enough as well. We see those root infections that eventually lead to that discoloration that you can see on that plant on the right and that diseased infection. We'd really like it to look like that on the left. And unfortunately, it doesn't go away. We can't detect this Fusarium crown rot unless we dig it up and split it. But it doesn't go away, even though it's not very, very visible. When it does become very visible is when we get to, you know, midway through or, or deep into grain fill is when the plant eventually succumbs to that early infection that never goes away and doesn't actually reach maturity and prematurely dies. And those plants that never reach maturity also don't have the ear weight. These are two ears that I pulled literally 15 feet apart, all from the same row from a May 11th planting. And as you can see, that healthy plant, that plant did, didn't show any premature plant death, had nearly a 50% increase in overall ear weight as opposed to that one plant that was infected with crown rot and eventually never reached maturity and just prematurely died. And you can see the reduction in yield that'll count for. Zyway is incredibly effective at negating this particular disease. So as we look into the individual site location, we're first gonna talk about Iowa. You know, Iowa, we, we were a really dry environment there. We really didn't see any of these particular systems or treatments pay very well. The Veltima did, did provide a $10 ROI. But if we focus specifically on Zyway and why the, the results were not particularly positive, it's important to look at the study information, the details of where the study was conducted. At Iowa, the previous crop of soybeans, so we didn't have a lot of residue to deal with. It was a very forgiving soil, a silt loam with high organic matter. Not the situation that's gonna lead us to a lot of crown rot or, or moisture that persists for a long period of time, and they were also pretty dry. We look at the Kentucky data, which was a little more mixed, but you see the overall results, Veltima continued to rise to the top, whether it's Veltima by itself or Zyway followed by Veltima, those were the treatments that, that warranted, or I should say, brought about the highest ROI. Not surprising when we think about the Kentucky environment, higher humidity, higher leaf disease pressure. And when we look at Zyway compared to say a Veltima treatment, especially once we get several weeks into grain fill, or excuse me, post-pollination, that's when that Zyway treatment tends to fall off and those post-tassel applications, in our case, Veltima, tend to rise to the top and just protect us deeper into that grain fill window. But when we look at the Ohio data, you can see all the different treatments looked incredibly positive, but particularly those that had Zyway. In fact, it was so positive, if you look at Veltima, which is PFR proven, a single application, a full rate of, uh, of Zyway the past two years nearly competed from an ROI standpoint. But in this situation, we can learn a lot from the way we positioned this study and the details of this study. The last two years we set this study up in Ohio the exact same way. Previous crop was corn, so it was corn on corn, lots of residue to contend with. We utilized a hybrid that we know can get Fusarium crown rot and can get that early plant death in 6235. And we have a lot more clay soils at, in Ohio as opposed to some of the other sites, particularly Iowa. That is an environment that tends to hold moisture, allows moisture to persist, especially with all that residue. With a hybrid known to get Fusarium crown rot, you can see our results were tremendous. But we also have to acknowledge there are some things that, that Zyway can't do for us. So Zyway is a single mode of action fungicide. It's a triazole only, and triazoles are not known to provide any plant health benefits. Many, if not 
literally 90, 95% of our fungicides that we utilize post task are combination fungicides, meaning they have multiple modes of action, and almost all of them contain a strobilurin. Strobilurins provide additional plant health effects, as you can see from the screen in front of you. And the one thing that they do very, very well that a triazole or zyway cannot do is that second bullet point. They really help that plant to slow down respiration and decrease ethylene production and really increases that tolerance to stress. And here's the proof. These are pictures from this specific study back in 2022. On the left, the Veltima treated, which contains a strobilurin. As you look at those anthers that contain the pollen, you can see 40, 50, 60% of those anthers are still shedding pollen. So we're midway through pollination. We got a low ways to go. As opposed to the untreated, Zyway was the same, which was literally 15 feet over. You can see there's very, very few anthers there, meaning pollination is pretty well commenced. This is very substantial because if you think back to those years when you've had some of your highest corn yields, maybe not every year, but oftentimes high corn yields are a reflective of a very favorable pollination window. What do I mean by favorable? Meaning long. The fact that there's 40, 50% of these anthers still clinging to those tassel branches on the Veltima treated really demonstrates that stress tolerance, giving us a wider pollination window, probably an extra day or even two that's substantial. If we look at the data of that specific year when I pulled those pictures from, you can see even as, as positive as the Zyway data was, anytime Veltima was used either in combination with Zyway or Veltima by itself, it still brought about an even bigger increase in bushels and an overall higher net return. And when we think about the systems and where you know each of these treatments, whether it be Veltima, post-tassel, or Zyway with the planter has a fit. We know those foliar applications made post-tassel do a very good job of protecting the plant you know, for three or four weeks throughout the beginning of grain fill. But where do I see the combination uh, working really well is those situations where you're concerned about Fusarium crown rot as well as tar spot later. Tar spot is typically a disease that comes in deeper into grain fill. And so uh, later applications of fungicide oftentimes bring about even better benefits. But if we utilize in this situation, we're concerned about both of those problems. Zyway early protects us against crown rot. And then that affords us and allows us the ability to delay that fungicide trip post tassel to perhaps better control tar spot deeper into grain fill. One thing to be aware of, Though, and I think this is leading to some of our mixed results in both PFR as well as on the farm, is some work out of Texas Tech demonstrating what does Trifol or Zyway do to some of our microbiology in the soil. And one thing they have found is there actually is a negative impact to several different microbial organisms in our soil, specifically our, buc our buscular mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae is our beneficial fungi in our soils that's highly responsible for getting more water and as well as the nutrients of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur into the plant. So if we're negating some of the effects and the, the benefits of that, that may be leading to some of our mixed results in some situations. So if we think about a Zyway uh, alone, so Zyway all by itself, when is it more likely to pay us? We think about those probable situations really are centered around what persists and, and leads to more moisture, particularly in that V2 to V7 time frame. When we think about heavier clay textures, corn after corn, if we're utilizing a product, a hybrid that we know is more prone to crown rot, that's when it's going to pay us more substantially, as well as those situations where we just can't not make that post-tassel application with a plane or drone or a ground rig. Because what I've seen is Zyway uh, it doesn't protect us as long in the grain fill against northern corn leaf blight as, say, a Veltima or, or a Moravis Neo application, but it does a pretty good job. And so those situations where nitrogen may be more limiting, that's when we tend to see more northern corn leaf blight. And I would expect Zyway by itself to pay us uh, better in those situations. When is it less likely? When would a Veltima, perhaps, or post-tassel treatment pay more? It's quite the opposite. Those well-drained silt loams, those hybrids that handle wet feet, uh, not as likely to, to pay us because we, we're not going to have that fusarium crown rot potential. And then also those situations like Kentucky or those situations where we just know we have higher foliar leaf disease pressure like bottom ground, it could be uh, less likely to pay us. And that I would look towards, like say, a post-tassel application. As well as we have to consider tar spot. Zyway is not labeled to control tar spot. So we need to be aware of that as well, that Zyway by itself uh, won't leave us satisfied if we're concerned about tar spot in our field. So hopefully that was beneficial as you start to segment which fungicide treatment is right for your acre or perhaps even that combination. As always, call the questions. Thanks for tuning in.